Welcome to season three. Thank you all so much for being here. Happy New Year to each of you. I pray that your year has started off with a bang. I am super excited. I'm trying not to... I feel like a little little energizer bunny right now. I'm just so full of just hope and joy and gladness to be here with you all to set start off the season. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's get to some some housekeeping, shall we? This is going to be a bridge between the podcast. Through this year, we're going to talk about either arrogance, anger, pride, or fear. We're starting with anger. I know. I am speaking from experience when it comes to anger. I didn't realize how much pent up aggression I had until God started revealing how I was talking to people, how I responded and what I felt even before and after. The, the grudges that I was holding, the things I was allowing to fester versus having an open and honest communication because I didn't realize or I didn't know how to talk through my feelings with someone else. Anger is an emotion that most people understand and they felt it. So the moment you say I'm angry, it's a vibration that happens. People immediately understand and and can connect to that emotion because they understand what it is to be angry. The difference, however, is what we do with that anger. The sin isn't being angry. We are taught to feel things. We are emotional beings. The sin comes in how we deal with it, what we allow, what we hold on to, how we allow that to penetrate others and how we impact people's dreams, how we crush them, what we do to them out of anger because of our fear. That's another topic I don't want to go too far because our Lord and Savior is a God of order and I want to present these ideas to you in an orderly fashion. So, number one. The very first thing I had to do was understand that God knows me and he's listening. God is listening to me and he is listening to you. When we have someone who will patiently wait for us to get out what it is we're trying to say, oh, that's such a burden that's lifted. When he just allows us to, to cry it out, to shout, to scream, and wait for us to process what we're feeling and we talk it out with God. So what did that look like for me? Well, when I first started really talking to God, I would go out on the trail, I would have my dog and we would walk and I would just start talking to God as though he was walking right beside me. I would shout if I needed to. I would just air all of my grievances, whatever that was, whatever was happening, I would just start talking to him. And as the days progressed, I would talk to him while I was driving, while I was washing the dishes, whatever I was doing, I inserted God with me. I acted as though he was right there beside me. And I can't even explain to you what a great, enormous weight was lifted off of my shoulders once I started receiving God as the almighty, all-knowing, spiritual, amazing father that he is. When I accepted that he does listen and he does care, when I acknowledged that, everything changed. So today I want you to take that step. Perhaps it's something you do all the time, or maybe it's been a while, or maybe you never have, but I want you to take that step and start talking to God as though he's your friend, as though he is right there, as somebody who loves you unconditionally, no matter the mistakes you've made, the sins that you've committed. God loves you and he wants to be in relationship with you. Come humbly before him with respect and offer him your heart. Ask him to change how you see things. Ask him to change your perspective. And as you do that, as you feel God's love wash over you, then I want you to repent. Tell God you are so sorry. 
Ask God to forgive you. Ask him to move into your heart. Repenting means changing our behavior. Now, it doesn't mean that we will be perfect, but we will strive to do more of God's will as opposed to our own. We can be blinded by our anger and miss opportunities that we really didn't have to. James chapter 1 verses 19 through 21 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So step two is be quick to hear. If we are truly listening to God and for God, our spirits will pause long enough to allow us to react in a way that would be godly so we do not sin in anger. That zero to 100 mindset that some of us have, and I have had it, and I'm not immune to it, because let me tell you, there are some times, people, whoo, I really have to pull it in and remember that God hears me and he knows me. He sees what I'm doing and he understands what I'm going through because Christ our Lord walked this earth. Okay, let's just leave that. <laughs> I don't even need to go any further. For those of you who have read, you understand. Our Lord Jesus Christ came down here. He was here and he walked the earth and he was among the people. So he understands and he knows that not only can we be infuriating people, we can be infuriating people. We can make others angry and we can get angry. Have you ever said something in anger that you wish you could have taken back? And in this day and age, don't be angry and let somebody have their phone, honey, because it's going to be on loop. People are going to see it and they're going to laugh at you. They'll laugh at you. And what does that do? That makes you angrier because people are not understanding and empathizing. They're laughing at you because you don't know how to pull when you should have pushed or push when you should have pulled. You can't get out the door quick enough. You left in a huff and that car won't even move in anywhere. It's okay to get angry. It shows a passion. It shows that you're convicted by something. Why are you angry? Getting to the root of that. Listen for God to help you move through it in a mature manner. As we work through anger, arrogance, pride, and fear all year long, I pray that you will journal, that you will really start meditating on God's word and applying it to your life, asking God how to make you a better person, not only for yourself, but for those around you. The best gift that we can give someone is to be emotionally balanced. Thank you all so much for watching, for being with me, for being on this journey with this ministry and for sharing this with your friends and family. I'm excited to talk about anger. If you have not listened to the podcast from yesterday, please do so. Please tune in. And tomorrow as well, Friday will be a devotional with journal prompts. So if you have not, please, 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 please subscribe to OurGivenPurpose.com. It is absolutely free. Saturday will be the weekly news where it will recap the entire week. And I look forward to seeing you all on next Wednesday. Before we go, I would love to pray for us as we are headed out into these, to these literal streets and these internet streets and the things that we are doing within our lives that we may continue to grow. Um, thank you all for being here. Lord, let us pray. Lord, creator of everything in heaven and on earth, I pray that from your glorious unlimited resources, you will empower us with inner strength through your Holy Spirit. Make your home in our hearts so our roots will grow down into your everlasting love and keep us strong. May we have the power to understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep your love is for us. May we be made complete with all fullness and power that comes from you, Abba Father. In your name, I pray. Amen.